the layer this is the keratin and this is the layer of the skin that is the epidermis and this is the dermis so over here there are all the uh, important five layers as we can appreciate now very importantly you can see that in the basal layer there there are certain cells okay there are certain cells in the basal layer which itself is not containing any kind of pigment okay which itself is not containing any kind of pigment and they are you having a clear cytoplasm they are having a clear cytoplasm so these cells which are not containing any kind of pigment okay these which are present in the basal layer of the skin uh, basal layer of the epidermis they are called as the melanocytes so melanocytes are melanin producing cells which are present in the basal layer of the epidermis and they themselves do not contain any melanin pigment why they are producing melanin but they are giving the melanin to the nearby keratinocyte so you see these cells all these nearby cells okay they are having melanin and this melanin has been shared by the melanocytes so the melanocytes are sharing their melanin with the keratinocytes so the melanocytes itself are producers of melanin but they do not store the melanin pigment in fact they share them with the keratinocytes so this is a junctional nevus this is a nevus which is called as a junctional variety of nevus what do you mean by that there is a benign proliferation of the of the melanocytes at the junction of the epidermis and the dermis that is why this type of nevus is called as a junctional nevus okay after that we are having compound nevus over here the proliferation is also present at the dermo epidermal junction along with that the proliferation is present at the level of the dermis as well now this kind of proliferation wherein uh, uh, both of them are present at the junction plus they are present at the level of the dermis okay this is called as a compound nevus we call it as a compound nevus wherein the proliferation is present at the dermo epidermal junction along with that they are also present in the dermis that is called as a compound nevus number d we are having a kind of nevus wherein the proliferation is only present at the level of the dermis this is called as a dermal nevus this is called as the dermal nevus okay and sometimes you know in some stages what happens that these nevus cells as we can see over here they become spindle shaped this process is called as neurotization this is the dermal nevus only which is showing neurotization Hello, welcome back myself dr jibran amar presents to simply pathology and today we are back with the skin part 2 today what we are going to discuss we are going to discuss about uh, the <coughs> malignant melanoma and we are going to discuss about uh, the melanin pigment and the melanocytes and the benign proliferation of the melanocyte that is the nevus so let us begin today's topic of discussion so one of the competencies in the national medical council is your nevus the concept of nevus and malignant melanoma now first we have to understand one very important thing that our skin okay our skin is synthesizing a kind of a uh, pigment that is an endogenous pigment called as melanin and the cells which are synthesizing the same they are called as melanocytes so we have already seen about melanocytes in the relevant anatomy of the skin they are present usually in the basal layers of the skin i will show you this is the normal melanocytes as we can appreciate so this is the layer this is the keratin and this is the layer of the skin that is the epidermis and this is the dermis so over here there are all the uh, important five layers as we can appreciate now very importantly you can see that in the basal layer there there are certain cells okay there are certain cells in the basal layer which itself is not containing any kind of pigment okay which itself is not containing any kind of pigment and they are you having a clear cytoplasm they are having a clear cytoplasm so these cells which are not containing any kind of pigment okay these which are present in the basal layer of the skin uh, basal layer of the epidermis they are called as the melanocytes so melanocytes are melanin producing cells which are present in the basal layer of the epidermis and they themselves do not contain any melanin pigment why they are producing melanin but they are giving the melanin to the nearby keratinocyte so you see these cells all these nearby cells okay they are having melanin and this melanin has been shared by the melanocytes so the melanocytes are sharing 
their melanin with the keratinocytes. So the melanocytes itself are producers of melanin, but they do not store the melanin pigment. In fact, they share them with the keratinocytes. So very importantly, remember in the exam, if they are highlighting a particular cell containing brown pigment, then these are not melanocytes. These are cells, these are the keratinocytes which have received the melanin from the melanocytes. Melanocytes are usually present in the basal layer. See, all these, these are the melanocytes. Okay, all these are the melanocytes. Okay. So, I would just like to give you a fair bit of an idea that now you understand what a melanocyte is. They are melanin producing cells present in the basal layer of the epidermis. Now, along with that, we have to understand that there are two kinds of tumors of the melanocyte. So, the tumors can arise from a melanocyte. Now, if the tumor which arises, if it is benign in nature, okay, we call that proliferation as a nevus. And if, and if the tumor arising from the melanocyte, if it is malignant, okay, it is malignant, then we call, use the term malignant melanoma we use the term malignant melanoma so this has to be very clear benign proliferation of the melanocyte is called as a nevus whereas malignant proliferation of the uh, melanocytes uh, it will be termed malignant melanoma so this thing should be very clear in your mind so let us try and understand this topic very well so before i start with today's topic of discussion i would just like to differentiate between the normal melanocytes the benign counterpart, the benign counterpart that is the nevus cells and the malignant counterpart. So what is the point of difference between these cells? The cytoplasm of the normal melanocytes, it is star shaped, it is throwing projections, okay? It is star shaped and throws projections. You know why? Because with this projection, they can give the melanin, okay? They are reaching out to the other keratinocytes to give the melanin. The cells are quite solitary as we can appreciate. There is no grouping of the cells. See, all the individual melanocytes that we can appreciate, they are present singly. They are not present in group. The nucleus is quite small and they are regular and mitosis is quite rare. This is the feature of normal melanocytes. Now, when there is a benign tumor of the melanocyte, that is the nevus, then such cells are more rounded or they might be spindle shaped as well. These are arranged in groups, that is they are arranged in the form of clusters, okay. The nucleus of most of these cells are like the normal ones only. They are small and regular and again mitosis is rare in case of nevus cells. But when you come in the melanoma cells, the cells are not only present in clusters but they are also present in the form of large sheets. This is very important feature. And the nuclear feature, if you see, most of the nucleus is large, irregular, hyperchromatic with a very prominent nucleoli. So nuclear pleomorphism is one of the hallmark features of melanoma. The mitosis is also very high. Mitotic rate is also very high. So usually you can see a lot of mitosis present in case of melanoma cell. Now, yes, this... I just wanted to, why have I shown you this image? In the first image, if you remember, I had shown that the layer of the epidermis is extending and surrounding the adnexa, that is the glands, okay? So the tumors can arise from this area of the epidermis, which is surrounding the adnexa glands as well. That is the importance of this diagram, okay? Now, first we are going to start with the nevus, that is the benign proliferation of the melanocytes, that is the nevus. Now, nevus can be defined as many different types. Now, as I told you, this is the normal skin or normal epidermis wherein you have single melanocytes, okay? They are single melanocytes are present over here. Now, in case of a nevus, okay, what you will find that there will be a cluster, but the cell feature, the nuclear features are very benign. So, this number one, that is the normal skin. If you see over here, this number B, this is A, this is your A, which is normal, this is your B. In B, this is a junctional nevus. This is a nevus which is called as a junctional variety of nevus. What do you mean by that? There is a benign proliferation of the, of the melanocytes at the junction of the epidermis and the dermis. That is why this type of nevus is called as a junctional nevus. Okay. After that, we are having compound nevus. Over here, the proliferation is also present at the dermoepidermal junction. Along with that, the proliferation is present at the level of the dermis as well. 
now this kind of proliferation wherein uh, uh, both of them are present at the junction plus they are present at the level of the dermis okay this is called as a compound nevus we call it as a compound nevus wherein the proliferation is present at the dermo epidermal junction along with that they are also present in the dermis that is called as a compound nevus number d we are having a kind of nevus wherein the proliferation is only present at the level of the dermis this is called as a dermal nevus this is called as the dermal nevus okay and sometimes you know in some stages what happens that these nevus cells as we can see over here they become spindle shaped this process is called as neurotization this is the dermal nevus only which is showing neurotization so we will start with the melanocytic nevus that is the first important thing that is the nevus what is a nevus it is also called as a mole it is a benign neoplastic proliferation of the melanocytes which is appearing in adolescence and in early adulthood it may act as risk factors simulants and precursors of melanoma now in most cases it occurs because of mutations in the components of the ras signaling pathway very very important point so it can occur because of mutations in the components of the ras signaling pathway so very important point that a nevus that is the benign proliferation of melanocyte they are usually tan to brown they are uniformly pigmented that it will be uniformly brown or uniformly black in color they are usually very small less than 6 mm across they are relatively flat macules or elevated papules with very well defined and rounded borders all these terms are very important i have already explained to you in details in the relevant anatomy what are papules what are macules i am not going to go into the details of the definition okay now there are many variants of a nevus nevus can have many variants one is lentigo simplex junctional variety compound and intradermal variety just one thing before i go forward i want to tell you always remember one important thing as the lesions are going to go deeper into the dermis okay as the lesions so as we see over here the lesions are going deeper and deeper into the dermis as you see so grossly you will see for example over here the lesion might be this much as it is going deeper it will become more elevated as it becomes dermal it will become more elevated okay so as the lesions becomes deeper and they go deeper into the dermis they are going to rise more above the surface okay this is very important uh, uh, thing that we should keep in our mind the first variety of nevus is called as lentigo simplex it is arising basically in childhood it is a small symmetric well circumscribed evenly pigmented tan brown macule so it is a macule there is no elevation okay so that means it uh, this particular proliferation of the melanocytes is present in the epidermis only or in the very upper layers of the dermis so there is not that much deep because the lesion is flat like a ma 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 macule now very important point is that lentigo simplex these lesions they do not become dark on exposure to sunlight but freckles are something which becomes dark on exposure to sunlight it is representing a benign hyperplasia of melanocytes because as per definition it is one kind of nevus only and remember the adjacent keratinocytes they are hyperpigmented now the main histological picture that we see under the microscope is a linear non nested melanocytic hyperplasia this is the major histological feature that we see over here so as you can appreciate over here there is a major linear non nested proliferation of the melanocytes so the proliferation is occurring along a linear way okay in one layer so linear non nested melanocytic proliferation so there is a single layer of proliferation there is no nesting up present over here so this is the number one type that is the called as the lentigo simplex which is a variety of a nevus the second very important variety of nevus is the junctional nevus as i told you over here the proliferation is taking place in the in the form of nest and the proliferation is occurring at the dermo epidermal junction now as i told you all the nevus they are quite well defined and the color is also uniform okay the nucleus is very important the nucleus doesn't show any kind of you know pleomorphism over here it is very uniform rounded with inconspicuous nucleoli and little or no mitotic activity remember most of the junctional nevus eventually they will grow deep into the dermis will become more elevated and form a compound nevus so grossly these are very flat lesion they are symmetric okay so they are symmetric from all the corners they are looking the same and they are quite uniform lesions as we can appreciate over here 
if you look at a junction and nevus over here so this is the basic if you can appreciate this is the basic epidermis and this is the basic dermis over here that we can appreciate and in between this is the dermo epidermal junction that we can see which is containing the proliferation of cell now see over here there is a neoplastic proliferation the cells are present in the form of nest but the nuclear features are not that much bad okay the nuclear features are very benign so this is basically a junctional nevus containing a rounded nest of nevus cell originating at the tip of the reti ridges okay along the dermo epidermal junction the third type the third variety of nevus that we call it as the compound nevus now the compound nevus is one wherein the proliferation is present both at the dermo epidermal junction as well as the dermis so because the lesion is going deeper into the dermis so they have become elevated over here so very important this is something which is called as a compound nevus now in contrast to junctional nevus okay if you see in contrast to junctional nevus because the lesion is quite deep so they the lesion is quite raised above the surface and they are dome shaped if you can appreciate from this diagram the lesion is very flat in case of junctional nevus but as the lesion goes deeper into the dermis they become raised and dome shaped but one very important feature of all varieties of nevus is that that they are symmetric and there is a uniform pigmentation so they have a uniformly brown uniformly black or light brown color okay histologically they will combine the features of both junctional as well as dermal nevus so you will have both of them together so as you can appreciate you can have you are having a component so benign, benign proliferation is there present at the tip of the reti ridges that is at the dermo epidermal junction you can see a proliferation and you can see certain proliferation of cells in the dermis so it is combining features of both dermal as well as the um, the epidermal component okay so there are features of both the types okay so this is basically the compound nevus which is having both components interepidermal as well as the dermal component the third variety of nevus is called as a dermal nevus now over here as the lesion has gone deeper into the dermis okay so the lesion will become more elevated clinically so clinically the dermal nevus becomes more elevated now the dermal nevus is characterized by the presence of three type of cells okay so type a cell is the epithelioid melanocytes type b is lymphocyte like type c is spindle shaped cell wherein we call it as that neurotization has occurred so the type a cells if you see that these nevus cells they contain round to oval nucleus that is smaller than the adjacent keratinocytes with finely dispersed chromatin in conspicuous nucleoli cytoplasm is prominent and contains coarse granule that is the basic definition of type a melanocytes okay the type b variety is smaller the nucleus is quite small and round and contains very scant cytoplasm just like your lymphocyte so they are also called like lymphocyte like cells and the type c they are present at the base of the nevus wherein the cell becomes spindle shaped we call it as neurotization so the dermal nevus can have all the three varieties of cells together okay remember the type b and the type c cells are present only in the intradermal and compound nevus okay it is not seen in the first variety junctional nevus may we will not get that so this is the dermal nevus as you can appreciate nothing is present at the dermo epidermal junction only a dermal component of proliferation of melanocytes can be seen okay this is the dermal nevus and there are three main types of cells so this is the variety the nucleus is larger with more abundant cytoplasm the epithelioid variety the nucleus is small round scanty cytoplasm lymphocyte variety and over here you can see that some of these cells are showing spindle shaped nature so there is neurotization that is the type c cells we can appreciate over here now apart from these important types of nevus okay there are certain types of nevus which can show atypical changes and such nevus is termed as dysplastic nevus atypical nevus active nevus or hot nevus so basically over here benign melanocytic nevus is present predominantly but there is a prominence of a junctional component along with hyperplasia of the individual basal melanocyte the overall cellularity is more than the normal type of nevus and you can see dermal inflammatory infiltrate as well now activation of a nevus may occur by exposure to sunlight uv radiation in pregnancy following use of oral contraceptive pills in association with malignant melanoma in recurrent nevus or even in a case of hiv infection so this is basically a dysplastic nevus as we can appreciate over here now clinically this is an atypical nevus you will see the size is quite large it is more than 5 mm 
as compared to a normal nevus the outline if you see is not completely regular it is little bit irregular in outline okay and if you see there is some variegation what is the meaning of variegation that there are different colors if you see this color over here on the outer edge is dark and on the inner side aspect it is lighter color so there is no uniform color that we were seeing in a normal nevus usually these are presenting as flat macules and sometimes they can present as target like lesion as we see in this diagram uh, the central area the lighter area that we see the central area is uh, basically raised okay the central area is raised whereas the peripheral area is flat okay the peripheral area is flat they appear in adolescence and they continue to develop in adult life it occurs on both the sun exposed as well as in the protected surface areas whereas normal nevus is not like this okay normal nevus is not like this now this is the morphological uh, presentation of a dysplastic nevus as we can appreciate now they basically they are acting as a compound nevus okay they have both dermal and epidermal components so compound nevus with marked lentiginous proliferation so you can see proliferation along the dermo epidermal junction okay so there is a marked dermo epidermal uh, proliferation so at the level of the dermo epidermal junction you have a marked lentiginous proliferation of melanocytes at the dermo epidermal junction nesting may or may not be there now these nevus cell nest if you see they are larger they are quite irregular in size so you can see they are not completely regular in size they have irregular shapes and size as you can appreciate okay so there is what is called as architectural atypia and sometimes the adjacent nevus like this and this they are fusing with each other so there is bridging of the reti ridges so the adjacent uh, you know uh, the adjacent proliferation of the nest they are fusing leading to what is called as bridging of the reti ridges and all these things are called as the architectural atypia so this is leading to the architectural atypia of the dysplastic nevus okay so the larger irregular nest often with the fusion of the reti ridges is called or contributing towards the architectural atypia now dermis is showing eosinophilic fibro plasia so there is a lot of fibrosis that is taking place in the dermis and there is along the blood vessels there is perivascular inflammation as well now coming to the nucleus the nucleus is showing some amount of nuclear enlargement hyperchromatia and irregular nuclear contours which is contributing towards cytological atypia so we can say that dysplastic nevus is a nevus okay which is showing some amount of architectural atypia characterized by large irregular cell nest and bridging of the reti ridges along with that we are also witnessing certain cytological atypia which is contributed by enlargement hyperchromatia of the nucleus with irregular nuclear contours okay the melanocytes might become epithelioid or they might become spindle shaped so you now understand the basic point of difference between the normal nevus that is the junctional dermal and the compound variety versus the dysplastic nevus okay now this is the high power view as we can appreciate over here you can see there is a dermal fibrosis so this is the area the pinkish area of fibrosis that has taken place this is over here the proliferation of the melanocytes as we can appreciate over here then there is a lot of inflammatory cells also present there is a dermal inflammation with proliferation of melanocytes at the dermo epidermal junction along with that there is a bridging of the reti ridges so this is one reti ridge this is another reti ridge it seems to be bridged okay by the proliferation of this melanocyte now very important the now the degree of atypia present in the dysplastic nevus is going to decide what will be the risk for developing the melanoma now remember one very important line taken from robins that although the dysplastic nevus can give rise to melanoma vast majority of them are clinically stable and they will never progress so this is a very important line that is given in robins okay now there is a diagnostic dilemma which is associated with the dysplastic nevus now melanocytic nevus which is usually compound okay with atypical changes in the intraepidermal component so if the degree of atypia is quite more okay you can call it as in situ malignant melanoma arising in a compound nevus and if the degree is below the threshold of melanoma then you call it as atypical junctional or compound melanocytic proliferation or nevus with cytological atypia this is what you can say so if you are very sure that the cells 
pro that, that the proliferating cells in the dysplastic nevus is you know sure shot you know it is uh, re resembling the melanoma cells you can use the term in situ malignant melanoma arising in a compound nevus but if you see that the amount of dysplasia is not that much amounting to melanoma then you can just use the term nevus with cytological atypia okay now we are going to see few other lesions very common lesions that are seen in the skin so one is your freckles we call it as fls usually if you see the freckles they are usually small tan light uh, tan red or light brown macules around 1 mm in size no hyperplasia of the melanocyte is seen hyperpigmentation of the freckles occurs due to increased melanin pigment within the basal keratinocytes either due to increased transfer to the basal keratinocyte or increased pigment production in the focal field of melanocyte now one differential diagnosis is the presence of cafe au lait spots in neurofibromatosis but they are far more larger and they arise independently of the exposure to sunlight now the second very important lesion is cafe au lait spot which is classically seen in neurofibromatosis now cafe au lait term is usually the french term for coffee with milk referring to the light brown color of the lesion now usually there are multiple lesions often poorly circumscribed there is a basal hyperpigmentation of the epidermis no deeper pigmentation there is an increased amount of pigment in the melanocyte some having joint pigment granules okay so this is basically cafe au lait spots okay so with this uh, we have completed the benign lesions of the melanocytes we have discussed about what are nevus and what are the basic features of a nevus what are the types of nevus and we have also dis uh, we have discussed in details about the dysplastic nevus so we will stop over here and in the next lecture we are going to discuss in details about melanoma thank you very much for watching this particular video